it's Friends and Neighbors time. Hello, I'm Sherry Tatum, one of your co-hosts uh, here on Friends and Neighbors. And you know what? Today we're going to hear Sandra O'Neill, my precious co-host, sing the most, oh, one of my favorite, favorite, all-time favorites songs. It's called A Waymaker. And if you've never heard it, I just say, sit down a moment, get a cup, a glass of tea, a cup of coffee, and just listen to the words to what our God is. He is the way maker. God is everything to us. And when you enjoy this song, you'll know it. You'll know what's in your heart. You'll know who Jesus Christ is. So listen to Sandra sing, Waymaker. Light in the darkness, 
Welcome back to Friends and Neighbors. And if you have been diagnosed with cancer, or if you know someone that has, or you've lost a loved one to cancer, I'm glad you've tuned in today because our guest, Tyrus Hinton, has done both. He's been diagnosed with cancer and he lost his child to cancer. But he's written a book called Baby Steps. I'm diagnosed, now what? So sit down a moment and absorb what he's going to say to you because he's been there, he's done that, and he might could give you steps that you could take, he might can, can enc encourage you, and it might get you through a bit of a hard time that you're going through. So welcome, uh, Tyrus, to uh, Friends and Neighbors. Now, it's like I've, I, I, you and I were talking before, and I've said it's hard for me to say, I know you lost a child to cancer. You went through it, your wife went through it. As a couple, yes. how did that affect your marriage at the time? Well, you know, I think it's, it's interesting as I look back, we're, we're grateful because we're in the top 14%. <laughs> of 14% of marriages that don't usually survive after the death of a child. Right, I've um, heard 86 that. 86% yeah. of marriages end in divorce after wow. the child has died. 86%, that's a huge number. That is so out of sight. we are in the top 14%. So looking back at it, we haven't been in the top 14 of anything for a long time until uh, yeah. our son passed away. Me neither. We, <laughs> <laughs> that's good to know. <laughs> but it, you know, when I, we reflect back, it really drew us closer to one another. Um, my wife and I are high school sweethearts. We dated as teenagers. We married out, right out of um, high school, her first year of college, we got married. Ow. And um, we started having our, started our family, started having our children. 
And we used to say, when we were teenagers, it's us against the world. Um, not that anything was bad, but it was just a personal commitment that we made to each other, that it would always be us against the world. Right. So when my son passed away, it was our chance. We bonded so much when he was sick. We bonded so much as we were going through. It pulled our family much closer together. It was only the five of us, and that's all we had. Her mom was working, my mom was working, our families were busy, and they couldn't stop their lives to take care of us. We then had to be the adults we made the choice to be, and take care of our own son. Now, they did come and visit, but you know we right. had to do that on our own. Absolutely. So it was us, and it's still us 25 years later. 25 years later. 26 years, and she's still holding on to the old guy. Well, that's pretty cool. Well, hey, and you're still holding on to her. Absolutely. That's, that's great that y'all are still a, a married couple because a few years back, I don't know how long, but you yourself yes. was diagnosed with cancer. Yes. So, oh, what happened? How, how, how did you feel? Were you paralyzed? I really was. I was kind of sitting there, and not paralyzed to the point, I don't want to make light of anyone that might be physically paralyzed. Yes. But I was definitely... Your um, emotions. Emotionally, Your thought I was definitely process. handicapped at that moment. Yes. Um, trying to process what had been given to me. So what did I do? I, you know, told my wife to go grab my book, and let's, let's start there. Well, and, but, okay... Who called you? Who did, how did you find this out? All right, so my doctor called me. It's Sunday night, 9-11, sitting on the couch watching TV. A Sunday night. Yep, so not 9-11, like September 11th, but he called me in uh, late August to let me know about this mm -hmm. diagnosis. And I said, oh my God. He says, you know, we biopsied uh, a part of what we took from what we saw in your small intestine. And unfortunately, I have to let you know that you do have cancer and we need to get this removed immediately. Well. Is it accurate to say that you went numb? Pretty because, much. Because, Tyrus, you'd already been through this years earlier with your child. For sure. And now you know you could die from For sure. this disease. Were you numb? Did you think, what, God, what is this about? Why again? Why do I have to go through this ag again? I, I'm a father. I, I have a good marriage. I have children. It was... Is, was that hard to understand for the, you? The question was, what have I done? That definitely... That yeah, came what up have as I done? Question. Yeah. What have I done? Is this some type of punishment? Um, that was definitely a question of mine. Like, you know, did I miss something? Did I not obey in some area? Or, you know, th things of that nature. But I, I quickly came to the resolve that I'm a man of faith. Amen. I'm a man of purpose. I'm a man of destiny. And truthfully, I won't leave until it's my time. You better believe it. And it's, it wasn't my time. Not until he punches that ticket. For sure. Amen. It, it, wasn't, it wasn't my time. Yeah. So even with that, I had the fear faith battle, the fear faith, and I went back and forth. Mm -hmm. But thank God, my foundation of faith was much stronger than my fear foundation. Right. And it, I, you know, I know we shared this kind of offline, but faith, you know, faith has a huge part to play in diagnosis. Amen. So you have to trust, and I believe that death didn't come and grab me on the operating table, even though it was a prolonged surgery. It was only supposed to take about two hours. I ended up in surgery for four hours. Okay. They were supposed to make three small little holes, mm -hmm. and they was not able to do it that way. They actually split me open, so I've got a nice oh. little, nice little mark on my chest, yeah. you know, that I have to look at. Yeah. But it's a constant reminder of what the Lord has done for me. And um, I'm figuring you brought me through all of that. Mm -hmm. so that I can share with the world that he's a healing God. Amen. And I went in with the approach, and I'm being so honest with you, I went in with the approach. If I die, I live. Mm -hmm. If I can just be honest with you, if I die, I live. My business yeah. was straight. We had already, you know, I, my stuff was already in order from years ago. And I said, well, you know, if I die, I live. Right. And my wife was like, wow. My wife, you know, <laughs> she had been here all these years and she saw how I was going on, you know, after well, the death of our son. Well, okay, but she's been through this, through the Absolutely. death of the child. Mm -hmm. Now her husband, now her is, husband is diagnosed. How did, how did she cope? What, what? My wife did what I did. Well, okay. So, that, that, so that's really important if there's any uh, spouses that are watching. Yeah. It's important for you, if, if your spouse is taking a negative approach, you have to get a positive approach. 
Yes. But if your spouse is taking a positive approach, the best thing you can do for them is hop on that positive bandwagon mm -hmm. and keep pushing them forward keep pushing them forward. So she did what I did. She reminded me at times when I started that battling with fear and faith, yes. and I would say, man, I just had a few days in between from the notification to the actual pre-screening for the surgery to the actual surgery. I only had days in between. Really? Um, that really, was all? Only had days in between. Um, before I went to see the, you know, gastro doctor, the gastro, gosh, oncologist doctor, so I only had days, but I had to, within those days, make a decision. Mm -hmm. Either I'm going to decide to live or I'm going to decide to die. That, and these are decisions that so we you, have to make you first. Had, you, you had given it, oh, I was like, completely over to God. Completely. You, you were in, in faith that God knew your yes. name. For sure. Power Sinton. I believe that. And that he was your savior. He was your healer. I believe that. I'll, yes. I'll give you something for free. Okay. Everybody wants to see a miracle. Nobody wants to be a miracle. Oh, I don't know. I'm good. See? see? I'm good. See? So Where folks I don't want to go through the process of becoming that miracle, but we always want to see one. We always want to say, God, I know you can. Do it for them. Yeah. Because you don't want him to come knocking on your door. Right. When he comes knocking on your door, how are you going to respond? Amen. So if I'm building a life of faith and I'm trying to leave a legacy of faith here in the earth, I have to practice what I preach. Amen. So no better way to practice it through the diagnosis of my own. Now, again, did I have some rough days? Oh yeah, mm. it was tough. Recovery was tough. Recovery was long. Recovery, it, it mm. took months before I could do some things that people naturally do every day with no problem. And you had, okay, at that time, did you have to do the chemo also after surgery? I did not. You didn't. And I'm telling you, that was a God thing. You it, didn't. It, it was a God thing. I asked, the Lord, and I'm being so transparent with you. Mm -hmm. I asked the Lord, please let him get everything he has to get while he's in there so that I don't have to go through chemotherapy. No radiation. I no. didn't want to do radiation or chemo. I was <gasps> really, I was begging the Lord. Yeah. I don't want to do radiation or chemo. Mm -hmm. I, I was praying that he got it all. And when I went back for my annual checkup the following year, that was in 2017, when I went back for my checkup in 2018, well, I had to do, of course, three months and six months, and I did an annual. He says, your margins have remained cleared. There are, there's no sign of cancer anywhere in your small intestine. He said, I even took a peek down because it took a part of my stomach because it had spread there. Oh. And God was so faithful to me. He Man. was so faithful to me. So not having to go through chemo, not having to go through radiation, but it was a determination on my part Yes. And I had to do some work on my part. So when you're diagnosed, you have to make a conscious decision. Okay, I'm going to walk in faith. I'm going to walk in faith. I'm yes. going to walk in faith. No weapon formed against me shall prosper, Isaiah 54 and 17. Right. Some scripture has to become your base so that you can have something to hold on to at times when the enemy will come. I you, would say it. You started um, uh, speaking God's promises. Over my life. Over your yes. life. And yes. the Bible says if you declare and decree a thing. For sure. Uh, you know, uh, but you, you have to stand. Uh, the Bible said, having done all to stand, stand and see the, the, the salvation of the Lord. It's hard to stand, though, sometimes, but you were resolved with this, that you were going to stand yes. and that God's word was going to be your physician, in For other sure. words, because the word is Jesus. For sure. So, and he's the greatest For sure. physician ever was. And you're, to me, a walking testament uh, to a that walking fact, Tyrus. Yes. yes. I mean, I'm sitting here uh, speechless yeah. bec because it's almost like, nah, Really? But it is. It, it happened, and you did it with the Lord's help. You beat the big C. You have to, you have to make a conscious decision that I'm going to live in spite of. So he, here's another secret for you. I'm diagnosed now what, right? Mm -hmm. So we're sitting here, we're talking. I have a heart <laughs> monitor on right now. Uh-oh. -uh. I have a heart monitor on right now while we're sitting here. Now, why is that? Because... They can't figure out why they can't get my heart to beat more than 39 beats per minute. So. What does it? And the doctor looked at me the other day and said, you must be tired. I said, I'm a little tired. I didn't sleep that good last what? night. <laughs> he, said, he, said, he said, wow, 
I've got to get to the bottom of this. It's not a fib. Well, I don't know what it is, and they're going to go in next week. But I, I told my bonus son on the way here, I said, you know what? God's got to work this out before I go back. That's right. God's got to work this out before I go back. And he God's got to work this out before I go back. Yes. Because I'm not getting a pacemaker. God's got to work this out before I go back. <laughs> God's got to take care of everything before I go back. <laughs> Amen. Because I'm not, I refuse to give the enemy any victory any in ground. my life. Amen. I am a miracle. Yes, you walking, are. Walking. Mm -hmm. And I'm decreeing it and I'm declaring it. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to let any of this stuff take me. Absolutely. And that's what it is. If, if you see me on my back, it's because I gave out, not because I gave up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's okay. going to be, I just gave out. My heart has to stop. <laughs> yeah. Because Tyrus head is going to yeah. keep going. God's been too good to me. But yes, he has. And you are helping other people, at, from what I understand, oh, yes. for what? 20 last 20 years, years you've been going and helping other people through this but how do you go to churches do you go to retreats so what happens is of course you know churches you always have people that somehow get wind of who who you are what has happened with you and you can talk with them there so of course yes. in our congregation but then we serve through nonprofit organization called Ronald McDonald House yeah. we go there and we prepare meals for families that are there who have sick children. So by then we connect. These families want to know, okay, who are you guys? Mm -hmm. You all have on these black t-shirts. You are all so nice. Mm -hmm. Why, you know, you got, wow, you guys cook this food for it, us? This, that not, is wonderful. We're not just doing, um, you know, your normal spaghetti and meatballs. Like yeah. we go in there and we try to get it on the weekends. So we can either have Saturday brunch or we can do a unique brunch for them, like ch ch chicken and waffles, or we try to do Sunday dinner. And we oh, spread nice. it out completely, like like you would be at your grandma's house for Sunday dinner. And uh, you do you? We do it. You we, cook that? We we cook. I can cook a little bit, not, Ooh, not as good as the ladies house. that come with me. But <laughs> I love some chicken. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah, now now that's on that's on <laughs> Saturdays when we go. Oh, with okay. Chicken and waffles, and the the <coughs> the people that are there, the families, they love it. They absolutely love it, and we get a chance to connect, and we start talking in conversation before you know it they've taken my telephone number I'm going to the hospital to see their baby and we're just spending time with them and we're just providing emotional support well, do, does, does any one of them come to you and say Tyrus help me what do I do for sure tell me tell sure. me is this gonna be okay what do I do yeah because I, if, you know, I almost lost my daughter when a 250-pound uh, railroad tie fell on her head wow. when she was seven, and they said she would never live. And that's partly how I am here for 23 years on this day. God brings good out of bad. All the time. But, but you know what? People nowadays, they, they'll come to me, what do I do? What, what, what do I? But it's a personal journey, isn't it? It it's, is. It, it's, it is. It's a thing you have to go through and with God and make a determination, right? You have to be driven. There has to be a drive. So we do it out of compassion because we know what it is to be there. Right. We know what it is to have a sick child. You know what it is to hear that your child might not make it. Right. I know what it is to lose a child. So even some of the families that we've support, we've had to walk alongside them to the casket. We've had to walk alongside them yeah, back. Oh, I, I lied to you not. We have to walk alongside them. And they say, Tyrus, thank you for being honest with me the whole time. Right. Thank you for being support. Yeah. Thank you you, for you support. can you do give them hope. Though, oh, absolutely. Because you're you're the walking testimony. I am the walking testimony. Yeah. And in my in my personal opinion, and my wife agrees with me one hundred percent, our son was healed. Yeah. In our personal opinion, our son was healed. He was healed from the struggle oh. that he would have to go through for the rest of his life yeah. with constant treatments for AML leukemia because AML is so aggressive in children's bodies. Is it really? It's aggressive for adults, so it's more aggressive for children. You think um, eight, 16 months being diagnosed, yeah. eight month battle with oh. their diagnosis, yeah. and there was no cure at that time. Now we're talking a long time ago. The studies that they were working on in the clinical trials they were running back then are now in effect. Really? And they were using some of those things that they were working on back then. Now, my wife and I are just like, wow, this is so, amazing. So what you're saying is they're, they're making great strides. They're making with great this. strides. Uh, because I have a friend uh, whose son died uh, with leukemia. Yeah. But that was 25, 30 years ago. Yeah. And now it's, uh, it's a much different story. Oh, they're living so much longer. Yes. The children are living longer. And some of them are even bouncing back and recovering from it and staying in remission a lot longer 
Really? Than, you know, years ago. Unfortunately, my son, he received a bone marrow transplant. Well, you know, can, if anyone wanted to reach you, is there a way they could re reach you, Tyrus? Oh, yeah, they can just go to PastorTyrus.com. I'm a pretty simple guy. Yeah. I try to keep it simple, <laughs> so just go, just go to PastorTyrus.com. It's much easier. Okay, okay. PastorTyrus.com. Yes. And, and, and they, could they, maybe you could give them some words of encouragement also. Oh, absolutely. I would be more than happy. Everything is there. All they have to do is shoot me an email. Okay. I'll be more than happy to provide okay. hope for and expected them to show them how to handle a miracle. Well, keep up the good work. Uh, I look forward uh, to it. Lee, I, I'm telling you, I am so glad you're here because so many people need this kind of help. And I hope that you are encouraged. And if you need Tyrus, please feel free to. He's there to help you in this journey. So thank you for being here with us on Friends and Neighbors, and we will see you, God willing, next time.